This is Girl Stop Playing, a weekly show that empowers black women to stop playing with their potential so they can live a life that they love. I'm Coriel, your favorite homegirl, and I'm on a mission to help black women make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you're willing to work. Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. You already know that I'm bringing you the information and the conversations to help you make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And today, we have a working woman in the building. We got my girl, Mai Ray, in the studio. Did I say it right? Yes, yeah, you said oh, it right. Oh, I was so nervous. Y'all, I have lived a whole life with people screwing up my name so much that I just hate messing up people's names. So I'm glad I got it right. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I don't even know where to begin. I'm so fascinated by the work that you do. So we're definitely going to get into your business personally and professionally but I want to start with personal side because mm-hmm. you are not a native to the country right not how did at you all. how did you get to America my you hi yeah yeah <laughs> so with my yeah yeah you can see that I'm from the Caribbean mm-hmm. but French Caribbean so basically I'm from Guadeloupe and Guadeloupe is an archipelago that is a region of France so mm-hmm. we are French territory and not too many people know about this I was island. Say, where is it? My geography is not my thing. Um, you might know Dominica, Saint okay. Lucia. Okay. So it's next to like Saint Lucia and Dominica. Okay. Yes. And so, what brought you here? What brought me here? So it's a long story, but to make it short, after high school, I didn't want to go study in France like everybody else does when they're from Guadeloupe, and I went to study in Canada. Mm. And from Canada, I lived uh, eight years in Montreal. And one day I had to go to Guadeloupe and they had a direct flight with Delta from Atlanta. I spent one night in Atlanta and I was like, oh my God, this is my city. I want to come live here. Yes, within one night. You just fell fell in love. love. What was it? Was it the blackness? Yes. (laughs) The blackness, but the excellence with it. And I'm someone who traveled a lot. I came to the U.S. before many times, but I never came to Atlanta. I went to Miami, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, all the big cities. Mm -hmm. And in Atlanta, as soon as we landed, I was just amazed. I was at the airport and all the TSA agents were black. I never seen that nowhere Mm -hmm, else. mm -hmm. And everybody was nice. So I went to the hotel, all the managers were black, and usually the black people are not people who's going to take decisions or high-level positions in all the other places I'm from. Mm -hmm. So I was really, wow, why so many? What's going on in this city? I want to be part of this. I love that because that is, I feel like I went to HBCU, Historically Black College, shout out to Tennessee State University. But there is no other black experience like an HBCU other Mm -hmm. than Atlanta. Atlanta is like an HBCU city in that you get the real black experience here. Mm -hmm. And there are black people in every position. In every establishment you go into, you are going to see from top to the bottom someone black, someone that looks like you. And to your point, there's not many other places on well, I won't say on Earth. In the country, there's not I many other on places. Earth. Personally, I've been to a lot of countries where there's a lot of the diaspora. Mm-hmm. And the only country, even in Africa, I feel like the only country that can match and city was Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And that's another reason why I want to go there. Mm-hmm. But to see black people really owning everything, where they are mm-hmm, physically, mm-hmm. And they're taking those decisions for for these things. It's unique. And I remember being in St. Thomas, Mm. this black island. And I'm the type of person, y'all, I literally just wrote about this on my blog. I cannot go somewhere and be amongst impoverished people and just have Mm. the time of my life. Mm. I can't do that because I'm looking at people's struggle and I feel bad. You know, that impacts my experience. And when I was in St. Thomas, this black island... I noticed that the menial jobs 
the lowest of the low, those are the jobs that the natives were working. And it was the colonizers, these white people that came in and bought up everything that were own. you know, they had ownership. They were in charge. Mm -hmm. They were making decisions. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't get jiggy with that. And to your point, that is why I'm still in Atlanta. I've tried to move twice. And both times it didn't work out, obviously. But if I'm being honest, there is no other place like Atlanta. And even when I travel other places, I miss the blackness of mm -hmm. Atlanta. Now, it's a little rat. You know, we got <laughs> we got all the sides. But to be able to have, you know, the excellence and yeah. the, the you know, the, the leaders of the city are actually, you know, black people, mm -hmm. I think is definitely unique. And it's something mm -hmm. that I think brings a lot of people to the city. And we're happy yeah. to have you. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Because I'm from Atlanta now. Come on know. from Atlanta. Because what you're doing in the city is so unique it's so needed i know when i came to your business to ecom spaces i don't even know what year that was it was a while ago right it you was, can probably tell me what year it was it wasn't even ecom spaces yet so i have two businesses here i have a parcel forwarding business mm -hmm. and i have ecom space so it was the parcel forwarding yes but back then i already had the idea for ecom spaces i moved to a building that also had office space mm -hmm. and i was like okay this is the plan that i have i don't have the money yet but let me start with what i get and that's another thing. Being an immigrant, we don't have a, no network. We don't know nobody. We don't have money. I don't have no family So how here. did you get started? Because that's one thing that a lot of Americans mm -hmm. look at, you know, foreign-born people who come here and just do amazing things. And we're like, well, what the hell? Why didn't I? How come I couldn't find the resources to do that? So how you know, did you actually, in a foreign land, start a business? I guess when you don't have a choice, you don't have a choice. You're going to find which resources you have and utilize them to grow them, multiply them, and, you know, do whatever you're trying to do. I literally started with no money. And I found a way to actually get paid by my clients before I will provide the service. This way I get the money, and then I can buy whatever they need and provide the service. But tell me what that means, because <laughs> when I hear people say, mm -hmm. and when, when they hear people say, I started with no money, and then you're in this space that you're mm -hmm. in, because you own, or you're in, I don't know if you own it, but you're in mm -hmm. the old Bronner Brothers building, yes. a historic spot, right? Mm -hmm. To say, I started with no money, and then we see this grand this. thing for a lot of people there's a disconnect there they're like well yeah. i don't have no money how come i can't do xyz <laughs> so what was that literal first step like i know yeah. this is what i want to do mm -hmm. i have no resources to do it what did you do next it's uh, it's gonna sound super silly i bought my a pair of shoes on ebay one day i received the shoes i use i'm really tall but i like wearing heels okay. <laughs> and i received the shoes i didn't like them and i was too lazy to go to the post office and return them, I decided to post the shoes online on my Facebook and hoping that some of my friends in Atlanta will buy the pair of shoes for me. Because I'm French, I have a lot of French contacts in my Facebook and all of them wanted to buy the shoes. And one of my friends actually shared the post and it was like 200 people were asking me from friends to buy the pair of shoes and I'm like, we got better shoes in mm -hmm. Paris. Why do you want to buy this pair of shoes from eBay in the U.S.? And the answer from everybody, all the girls, was that they wanted this one because they couldn't find that one in Paris. Mm. And then it just tilted. I was like, oh, my God. Okay, right now I don't have much money. Uh, maybe that's a way to make money. People actually want to buy stuff in the U.S. And these websites don't ship to France. I might as well just go out open. I didn't have money to get a website. And back then, that was in 2013. Back then, it wasn't there was no Shopify. It wasn't easy to open a website. So I just created a Facebook page. It's free. Mm -hmm. I started screenshotting the, the shoes on the eBay store and putting them on Facebook. And with the price, I created a PayPal account. It's free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then people started to buy the stuff. They were like, okay, I just paid you this amount. So you would buy them after they bought them from you. Exactly. So Ooh, I would wait. You a bad girl. <laughs> I would wait. But then that, that became a little bit mm -hmm. difficult. <laughs> but with, it, it, without so. knowing it, I actually was doing drop shipping, but like a two-step drop shipping with parcel forwarding. 
and you didn't even realize what you were doing yeah i wasn't realizing what i was doing but it was working people started buying i had my first sales i was like oh my god people actually buying this stuff and it became i started selling clothes and stuff for, for men too shoes you name it i had a store i had a full and store and so that showed you a need because yes. these companies were not shipping direct to france exactly and so that created your first business which was yeah. Parcel forwarding? Yes. So but your second business, because technically this eBay hustle was I, a little exactly. business. Exactly. Really, when we think about it, it's like it was a first business because I was buying, selling it. Yep. And as I was doing this, more people started to, to ask me, well, I want to buy this stuff from you, but I also want to buy from this website over there who doesn't ship to my address. Can I ship it to your address? Can you be the middleman? And then we can consolidate everything, and then you ship everything to me, and I pay you for the service. And I was like, that's actually better. I don't have to deal with inventory. I don't have to run, try to buy the stuff. If they already sold out, I have to refund. I don't have to deal with inventory. They just buy their own stuff, and I charge them to forward the parcels to them so obviously me not being foreign i don't have a need for this yeah. but i be being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and having customers in other places i've come across this where mm -hmm. i know that you are in jamaica for example mm -hmm. but you got me sending something to this miami address mm -hmm. because they were doing exactly what you're saying exactly. that miami address was collecting everything exactly. and then forwarding it over to them yes so a need you discovered yes. a need and that is kind of how you got in the door so what, exactly. what's the in-between part though so you started this eBay mm -hmm. thing that kind of turned into you doing parcel forwarding mm -hmm. and then how did you make that like bigger a, yes yes so the bigger is actually because I was able to identify a niche when I started to become bigger I was like how come nobody else does that so I do I did the market research without knowing what I was mm -hmm, doing mm -hmm. and I realized that all the other companies that were doing this they were making millions but none of them were targeting french speaking countries mm. just french france alone has so many french overseas territories you have french polynesia new caledonia guadeloupe martinique french guyana uh, saint pierre et miquelon mayotte it's a french overseas territory next to every continent and in each ocean of the world mm. It's a lot of people who need this service. Who have been left out. And nobody knew it. And I was like, oh my God, let me just do this in French. I speak French. I don't have to learn something new. It's a skill I have. And really to do this, you just need to have a U.S. address. You have that. You need to have a space. I have my bedroom. <laughs> so I literally for a year, a full year, I was doing this from my bedroom. Mm. I had roommates. Uh, and what, as as I was growing, I was getting, I got a house. I was doing it from the garage. I did everything that I could to stay in my house as long as I could to save money mm -hmm. so I could get to a commercial space. Such a smart way of doing mm -hmm. it because Instagram will have you out here renting spaces, leasing an office, yes. purchasing inventory, putting the cart before the horse, before yes. you've even proven that this is a need, before mm -hmm. you've shown that you can actually mm -hmm. generate a profit, that mm -hmm. people will actually you know, need, this need this service. Now you have put yourself really in debt, and now any money that you make, it's not even going to be profit because now you're just trying to cover the money that you've already spent. Exactly. So I love that you kept overhead low. Mm -hmm. You identified a need. You kept overhead mm -hmm. low. You hustled until you could make it make sense to go out and get this space and i love that you have been able to just do so much more so let's catch the people up because i saw you a couple months ago yes um when you got your grown woman award yes. um and one of the things that you shared was shortly after that you were going to do a pitch competition mm -hmm. so tell us about the pitch competition how did it go what were the results even though i already know the results Woo! that pitch oh my god that was one of the hardest thing it might have been the hardest thing I did in my entire life. I hate being like, even doing this right now, it's a lot for me. I don't You're like doing well. Camera. You're doing well. <laughs> but uh, first of all, I never applied for any mentorship before. I never applied to any program before that. So that was a first. And I never pitched the business ever in my life to nobody, not even like a one person. 
and yes i'm going to explain people what the business is but being in the pitch mindset okay i'm trying to get something yes of, yeah never done that uh don't like to be on the spot so i did the mentorship program with black ambition hope not hoping but believing that you know there's so many other businesses it was thousands of businesses i'm not gonna get selected for the pitch you know it's my first time doing this and that's what everybody told me they were like oh it's your first time you know it's not gonna be you know you're lucky already mm-hmm, to be mm-hmm. in the program so then we fi- we found out uh, we made it out of 50 finalists then the 35 finalists and then the eight finalists that were pitching on stage in front of Pharrell, uh, other celebrities, investors, big corporations, you name it. And I was freaking out because I didn't prepare for that. But you did, I did it. I did the mentorship and we can we walk on the pitch deck, but without the A, I'm going to be actually pitching. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I didn't practice my pitch. Probably the Saturday, so the pitch was on Wednesday or Thursday. I finalized my script for the pitch literally on Sunday, right before, which means that I didn't practice it. (laughs) Uh, I just had one day to practice. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened. (laughs) We still, we got second place. And even now, I realized that I really, the thing with the pitch was that I stayed authentic with it and I wanted to really showcase the people we helped already and show how it started the struggle, why I'm doing this and really authenticity was really important Mm -hmm, for me. mm -hmm. I was scared of my accent. I was like, oh my God, people might not understand what I'm saying. I'm going to start stuttering and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I hesitated a little bit during the pitch, but it was all authentic. That and was that's me. that's what people are connected yeah. to. I have a mentor who says, you know, we're out here trying to keep it cute, but keeping it real is what's going to get yeah. you places. And that is a testament to, to what you experienced. I think that it worked in your favor that you didn't have time to memorize this script because it would have came out very, much more robo- much more robotic. Yes and scripted versus yeah. I'm going to just get up here and share my story. Yeah. I'm going to just speak from my heart. And I, obviously mm-hmm. you have prepared some, but mm-hmm. I'm going to speak from my heart. And I, and people could probably feel your heart. Mm-hmm. They could feel the mission behind um, what you're doing. So for the people who are not familiar, talk about e-com spaces because e-com mm-hmm. spaces is not parcel forwarding. Nope. E-com <laughs> spaces is out here. Listen, anybody before you, before you even tell them what it is, get your notebooks out. And be prepared to share this episode with an entrepreneur who you know, okay? Especially if it's a black Mm -hmm. entrepreneur, because what you are doing, what a black woman is doing right here in Atlanta, the world needs to know about it, okay? So tell them about Ecom Spaces. Well, Ecom Spaces is an e-commerce hub. A lot of people think that we're only a fulfillment center. We have a fulfillment center, but we are not a fulfillment center. We have a co-working space, but we are not a co-working space. (laughs) We have content creation space, but we're not a content creation business. We basically, our main focus is to help e-commerce brands to grow, run and grow their businesses and to guide them. So previously, in the previous years, we would just onboard people to do fulfillment, to take product photos, uh, to utilize the space without guiding them. And this year, but since the beginning, I always wanted to do this. That was my goal. Okay, I need to get to this point where when someone comes to us, we assess their business and we tell them this is where you are right now in your journey and this is what you need to focus on. As founders, we have a big, big problem when we are in e-commerce. We tend to focus on the product only. That's the fun part. That's the fun part. (laughs) That's the part that made us want to start the business Mm -hmm. in the first place because we're helping people with it. But once we have created the product, we should not be creating another million thousand other products. You should focus on creating your brand and then solidifying your organization and then automating your process and to delegate and then you can scale and expand at new products. Mm-hmm. 
but adding new products is not right away. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure, not trying, we are. <laughs> we are helping all these brands, mm -hmm. all these founders focus on the right thing at the right time to save them money and accelerate their growth. So when I was heavy in the e-commerce space, mm -hmm. I you know sold products, mm -hmm. I built Shopify stores, I taught people how to use Shopify. I mean, I told everybody, under the sun about you yeah. because for so many people we think that drop shipping is like the mm -hmm. only way and when I say drop shipping I mean using like a printful or a printify you know a, a drop shipper mm -hmm. like that print on demand I should mm -hmm. say um, or using like AliExpress or you know drop shipping in that way so to have a local fulfillment center mm -hmm. even though you're not only a fulfillment center <laughs> but having a local fulfillment mm -hmm. center as an option to walk into literally put your products on this warehouse mm -hmm. shelf it's just a whole nother it's it's, oh, a, yeah. it's, a ne it's next level yeah it's next level and now the market has changed the consumer has changed so drop shipping was working well a few years ago even dropping a product during the pandemic you will make millions mm -hmm. and people were again focusing on the products trying to sell products to people the consumer has changed now, when they're looking for the product you're selling on Google, now it's not 10 different brands that sell it. It's going to be 200, 400 different brands selling the same product, solving the same problem. So which one are they going to pick? They're going to pick the one they connect with. Mm -hmm. And they connect with a brand. You don't connect with a product. You have to connect with a brand. And so we see a big change. Even the brands that we have right now, the ones that didn't uh, work on their community, on the way they're connecting with people, are seeing a big dip. Like they're like, oh my God, what's going on? We used to make millions last year, and then this year we like six figures. We used to be seven figures. Mm -hmm. And we tell them like, okay, now you gotta take a step back. You have to do a brand strategy and revisit how you do your marketing. Paid ads doesn't work the same it's way it same. used to. Yeah. And being able to connect with your audience is um, Priceless. the key. Yeah. I think that the pandemic definitely it created a lot of millionaires. Like people made money during the yeah. pandemic, but the way we made money during the pandemic mm. is not the same anymore. You no. know, even like the E-commerce is not the same anymore, but even mm -hmm. like the info product space, the courses, mm -hmm. the digital products, the, everything has changed. Mm -hmm. And for good reason, I think a lot of people had a get rich quick type of thing going during mm -hmm. the pandemic. And now, you know, that the veil has lifted, mm -hmm. we can kind of see that we were mm -hmm. scammed or sold a dream and we have just kind of changed what, what we're prioritizing. Mm -hmm. So I think to your point, people are looking for somebody they can trust mm -hmm. they're looking for that community and they mm -hmm. want so much more beyond just this product mm -hmm. um and so i love that you are kind of creating a community of even the clients that mm -hmm. you work with do you have any clients that you're working with that you want to um shout out <laughs> or, or share about Ooh, we've had so nicole so we've had yes nicole. we have nicole my happy flow mm -hmm. we love her she's like literally she's yeah Perfect. She's doing all oh, of yeah. the things. She's doing everything. MyHappyFlow. Is it .com or .co? MyHappyFlow.co. Okay, .co. Yes. And she's doing everything in the right order. She's very meticulous, but she had businesses before, mm -hmm. so she knows. Bringing she that experience. Exactly. And also she listens. When you give her a, a advice, she's going to listen to it. Some founders are so... I don't know why so a lot of them are like this. It's almost like, oh, my product is my baby. That I want to do it my yeah. way. But uh, your way ain't working, babe. Exactly. Yeah. So listen to the experts and the expert who did it before, mm -hmm. you know. Um, who else? You know, we got Slutty Vegan in the building. Do you? Yeah, we do. Pinky, <laughs> come on down to the show, okay? We need to talk. I, I, what, so what, is it her sauces or? She has merch. Oh, yeah, so they okay. have a lot of merch. It's really cool. They even have stuff for babies. Really? Yeah, it's really is cute. this like breaking news? Are people this are already is it's it already, already on sale? There, but this year we definitely gonna help with okay, marketing I seen and no everything. Baby stuff, but okay, yeah, we'll check it out. it's organizing. But this year is gonna be like yes. I go. love that you are able to give opportunities mm -hmm. to other black. I mean, 
people, but you know, yes. I'm all about the black women. So yes. I love that you're able yes. to. Yes, actually, those our ideal, our avatar is a black woman for Ecom Spaces. And because that's the person who really need, who needs the help the most. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, black women. I don't know if it's in Atlanta. It's not only in Atlanta because I get a lot of love and support from people from Guadeloupe, in France, in any country, in Italy, name it, Australia. When a black woman does something great or even good, we support them. Yeah. It's yeah. Our community is amazing. And that's why it's my avatar because when I know I'm treating them well or they're treating me. 10x exactly mm -hmm. exactly what has how has this impacted and benefited you personally and professionally because mm -hmm. i can through the podcast i'm able to meet so many amazing mm -hmm. people through having a real conversation i'm able to you know nurture a relationship mm -hmm. with someone who otherwise would just be a stranger and mm -hmm. i can imagine your rolodex <laughs> of just the clients that you have, but yeah. also the true connections that mm -hmm. you've been able to make. How has this business impacted you personally? With the connections that I, that I made, I feel a lot of my clients uh, became friends. We give each other advices. We go eat lunch together. We go, you know, we go do stuff outside of work. Mm -hmm. So... And that was important. When I was working from home, I was totally isolated. So from 2013 to 2015, 16, I was all alone. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go out, do anything. The few friends I had, I couldn't see them because I was stuck in my house working. It sounds sexy now, the mm -hmm. business, but, but I was working seven days a week, seven from seven in the morning to 1 a.m. in the morning, seven days a week for three years. Mm -hmm. And people don't see that side. That part. And because I lived it, it was important for me with Ecom Spaces to create a community so they would not experience the same thing I experienced. And also to be able to vent. So that's something that we do a lot. And when you vent a lot with other people, then you become close. You talk more about personal mm -hmm. stuff. We share a lot about our personal life. I'm married. So Are you married, girls? Yes, we were about to get into that. Yes. How long have you been married? I've been, re been married 10 years. Shut we celebrated up. 10 so years. So you were, you were married when I met you? Yes. Were you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I uh, got married right after I started the business. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I need to know. Was yeah. this somebody here, somebody you already knew? Like, how? What's no, the story? It's, I, we actually met online. Shut yes. your mouth. <laughs> Ten years ago. Ten years ago, we met online, but we didn't meet in person right away. Okay. Uh, it was actually, ha it happened after uh, I had a long rela relationship with someone from Atlanta for four years. Didn't end well. Uh, it wasn't a good relationship. You know, the type of relationships you got to get out, you know, from the first week. That shouldn't be here. And then you still stay in it for four years. Some people, 10, 20 mm -hmm. years. Um, and... After I broke up, I mean, it was a few months after, and some of my friends were like, hey, uh, you should go and date, like, go online, and they created a little profile for me. Come on, friends. No, yeah, I guess I'm happy they did that, <laughs> because I was not going to do that. And But then we met, it was the first person to send me a message. Wow. And then right after I closed the thing, I gave him my Facebook, and we started talking on Facebook. But we never were, like, talking to date really we're just, just talking about other, stuff getting to, know, getting each to know each other and then a month later we met in person and then that was it we instantly was fell he in, in the love. same city he was in atlanta he was in atlanta okay what was the dating app what was the site i think it was plenty of fish really i'm telling you you that's are crazy. maybe the third or fourth person that <laughs> but not these days like it was oh, like yeah, 10, back eight, then. 10 years ago exactly. yeah i think a lot of people were um yeah. were finding good yeah. matches on plenty of fish wow yeah so we met this from puerto rico okay so like me he has that thing that his family is not here all his family is in puerto rico in other countries uh so we really connected with that we're from the caribbean but it's not the same mm -hmm. island mm -hmm. I didn't know about Guadalupe. No, he doesn't speak French, but he was like, oh, you're from the Caribbean. Do you speak he's Spanish? Mm, poquito. A little bit. Poquito. <laughs> that's why I be like, poquito. And then people try to say, well, mm -mm, that's it. It's not with the poquito. Wow. I yeah. had no clue. So you yeah. really keep your business to yourself. Because this Not ain't, really. I mean, I'm just people who know me, they, they know, know I'm married. They know. No. How, so how has your marriage been impacted as your business has grown or has it mm -hmm. so because i already had started my business when i met him 
from the get go, I was like, well, I'm doing this. I don't know what it's going to become, but this is one of my priority mm -hmm. until it becomes a certain way. My focus is going to be on this. And so that didn't really affect us in the way that he understands and he sees the potential of the business. Um, but it is, for me, I think it's sacrificing a lot because it's, it's my time when I'm not home, when I'm working late, when there's on Saturdays I have to go to the warehouse or do something instead of maybe doing something with him. I do feel not guilty, but I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait to get to the next level so I can spend more time with my husband. But so far, he hasn't created any struggle in the marriage. I yeah. love that. I love and that. That's very important. If you already have a business and you're dating, to make that clear from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm doing this thing, and I don't know for how long, but I cannot sacrifice this. I want you to know that this is it's almost yeah. like having a child. Like, yeah. I need, I'm not going to have this baby because yeah. I need you to know there's going to be some yeah. late nights, there's going to be some weekends. Yes. So, I think that balance is BS. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that anybody who tells you that they have balance in their mm -hmm. life, I just don't think that's realistic. Mm -hmm. But how do you even, not even necessarily find time for mm -hmm. your husband, where do you find time for yourself? Woo. I like to do stuff in bulk. <laughs> I don't like to take little vacation, little weekends. I feel like when I do this, it's, it's not helping me. That's the way I'm built. Mm -hmm. I tend to take long vacations. Okay. I do not go anywhere. I rather take one, uh, one vacation a year and live for a full month than mm. living five times Doing for like three, three days. Because like, it's going to be three days or, uh, only. I'm going to be traveling. Then the travel going to make me tired. And then I won't have time to enjoy. It's going to be maybe two, one day of relaxing. Then we have to travel back. I need time to refuel and resource myself. I just came back from Guadeloupe, from my, my, highland, my island. Mm -hmm. And I spent three weeks. And I was totally cut off. Oh, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I don't know how y'all do that. I think that's a very <laughs> non-American. Like, Americans, we take a two-day, yes. three-day. And I, I'm definitely indoctrinated because if I'm gone, five is like my max, five days. After five days, it's, like, not fun anymore. Now it's like, Ooh. I have things that I need to do. I need to get back home. I need to. But I love I love that for you. And I yeah. feel like Europeans, whenever I'm on vacation that's and true. I just happen to meet, they're like, yeah, we've been here two weeks. And yes. I'm like. That's very European. It's very a holiday. You're taking yes. an extended yes. break. So is your husband, does his career or business allow for him to be able to do that with you? He did for a little bit, and then now he's back to work, so he doesn't anymore, so he couldn't come with me for the three weeks. But before that, it was he had he had a very very flexible schedule. Mm -hmm. So we were able uh, the year before to go to Tanzania for a month, uh, and yeah. So me when I travel, especially far destinations, baby, it gotta be a month at three make it weeks. Work. Make it make sense. Yes. So with all that you do and mm -hmm. having the flexibility and ability to be able to take a month off, mm -hmm. you cannot do that without having systems, processes, and mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. in place. Yes. The hardest parts of business. Because, yes. again, the fun Ooh. part is let me make a logo. Let me get on Canva and create some stuff. Let me design this product. That's fun. But delegating, managing, having these SOPs, getting organized, not fun at all. What is your advice for someone trying to navigate that space of, like, proper business operations? I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> but it's a long-term process. Mm -hmm. Is Last that a destination? Year, yes. It's the part that I enjoy the least of the business is the people. But at the same time, it's the part that makes me the most, the, the happiest mm -hmm. when it's actually walking. It's so weird. Um, and people, I just found out this week that people really need leadership. But, you know, we hear that all the time. Uh, but they need to be inspired and they need to have some type of inspire that motivation is not always intrinsic yes. yeah yeah and for the past three years i've been looking for a strong warehouse manager for us and i haven't been able to find one everything that i try is a fail every person that i try to bring in there doesn't 
is not cannot so are get you still in that role technically I am still in that role technically with the team that I have they still they do they can do things but whenever I step out and I let one of them take over there's some friction with the rest of the team like it's almost a little mutiny because mm -hmm. they want me to do it so the challenge is to find instead of looking for someone uh, to replace me I got to change the entire I have to make sure the entire organization is strong on their culture. So instead of hiring a warehouse manager, I got a chief culture officer mm. to help us with the culture, to make sure that whatever I do, I think about the vision of the company, what we're doing, what are you packing boxes right now? Like you are in the warehouse packing boxes, you are as important as me, the CEO, because if you don't do it right, nothing works. That type of things that you need to do through, I don't know, team outings, workshops, mm -hmm. even the way you talk to them. And the culture of the business is now very important for us. And I think that was where the issue was. I will hire someone, they will come in. And in my mind, I'm just thinking, it's just the process and the SOP. We have all of that. Why it doesn't work? We have everything. We have the system. I'm paying a warehouse management system six thousand dollars a month Oof. and yes girl it's like expensive stuff and system so it can work and it still doesn't work without me what is wrong with me and it's not me it's that the culture that i want for the business has to be expressed in everything mm. and you those, need are, the, those are the things you don't see on instagram yeah. No. It's, you see the results, mm -hmm. but you have no clue what that process was yeah. like to get there. And most of the people mm -hmm. in the process have no clue. Yeah. They're just like figuring it out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anytime I have somebody sit down on the couch and I ask this question, typically the answer is, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I don't have it figured out. It's not yeah. a destination. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just like to consistently ask that question mm -hmm. to prove the point that it's not a destination it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing journey of yeah. okay well that shit didn't work yeah. let me not do that again let me try exactly let me try something else and nobody has it figured out your favorite favorite does not have it figured yeah. out she's yeah. struggling to <laughs> it's just on a prayer okay trying to figure it that's crazy because we try getting some from from the outside and every time you try something you lose money try to get someone from the outside didn't work try to promote someone from within didn't work uh and doing it myself, doing it me. It's not sustainable. Cannot, yeah, it's not sustainable. But also, if we want the company to grow, I should be doing other stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and we proved that with uh, the Black Ambition Mentorship. I need that to was do a more better of use of your time. Exactly. Because yeah. you be so, in that warehouse scanning labels and stuff. I know. I, yeah. I haven't done. I, I'm less you getting and better? less. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, even since I came back. I uh, was like, you know what, Mary? No, you back, but you should not be in the warehouse packing or scanning anything. You make them do it. Yeah. You've been sticking to that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, come I'm on. New that, energy too. for 2024. Okay, so for anybody watching this that has a desire to do mm. business globally, mm -hmm. what is your advice? Obviously, mm. part of their desire might not be to pick up and move to that location. Mm -hmm. So what's your advice for doing business globally? Why not? Well. Pick up and go, just uh, like I did. You did it. <laughs> you did it. But girl, I got these children, okay? Not a problem. Uh, world, world school. What what can we do to get started though, in First, another land? It's looking at where you should expand. Maybe are you ready to expand? That's another thing. Because uh, you remember you have a roadmap. You have a, your journey. Where are you on your roadmap? To make sure, hey, should I already go global? Am I ready to go global? You know, if you're not big enough here, I just said that maybe no, maybe no. Maybe I'm gonna retract that. Because sometimes we do things here, but it might be better to do it in another place. Because I'm sometimes thinking, you're doing the right people, right thing in front of the wrong people. Yeah, 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 that's true. Because mm. me right now, I even think I should not be in the U.S. I should be in Ethiopia already. Really? Yes. Is that your goal? Yes. Wow. Yeah. The goal is really to have Ecom Spaces head office in Ethiopia. Mm. Yeah. Global, global, for real. Global, global. I believe that Ethiopia is going to be the global leader in e-commerce in the next 10 years. Really? So we have to position ourselves now 
so we cannot be left behind mm -hmm. like we always do every mm -hmm. time we go too late to places and it's already it's hard. All, it's already over with. Yes, and knowing that a lot of things going to be manufactured directly in Ethiopia and that we can ship D2C direct to consumer mm -hmm. directly from Ethiopia, that will be a huge game changer in e-commerce. It's also well located. So you two days shipping to Europe, to Asia, and to the U.S. The so, location so is, is your um, is what you're saying? You think that Ethiopia will be like the new China, like what China is with with even manufacturing and, and I think even better. The Chinese are investing heavily over there. They're building a lot of manufacturers. Mm. The Europeans are also there. A lot of Americans, mostly white Americans, are investing there. The first trip I went to Ethiopia, um, what's her name? Don Donald Trump's daughter was there visiting uh, small businesses to look at which one to so invest in. So they already in. know. Yes, they mm. know. And all you see in the news, though, about Ethiopia, they talk about wars, don't go over there. They but they all over out of there. Their money. Mm -hmm. They're all over there right now while, while, while they're telling you not to go. Uh, we already do business with Ethiopians, so mm -hmm. that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. And But the goal is yeah, to be over there. Because, listen, labor cost is rising in the U.S. Mm -hmm. If it costs you less money to produce your products, your cosmetic products that you produce here in the U.S., in Ethiopia for a cheaper price with better ingredients, and shipping will be also cheaper, even to ship in the U.S. directly to consumer. Uh, it's sense. not, yeah, it's not rocket science. I know that people are gonna think, well, but we're gonna take jobs from the U.S. We're gonna find something else to do, and there's other things we can do and this provide. Yeah. Well, while you're in Atlanta, yeah. while we still have you right here to to, <laughs> to leverage and utilize all of the amazing things that you have going on, let the people know in this camera. Mm -hmm. um, you already mentioned you got the fulfillment, you have the co-working space, mm -hmm. so. We know what you have, but who is it for? So look in this camera, yes. tell them who it's for, who needs to come see you, and where they can find you. Well, our services at Ecom Spaces are for any e-commerce founder. And we put the emphasis on purpose-driven e-commerce founders, which means that you are an entrepreneur who started a business because you were able to create a product to solve a problem either for you or for someone you loved, and then you realize, whoa, I can actually sell this and help other people. So we want to help people who want to help people. What we offer first is guidance. We want to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes that I made when I started my business that cost me thousands of dollars. Some other founders that I met lost also thousands of dollars outsourcing the wrong services with the wrong service provider at the wrong time and we're going to go through a roadmap with you and tell you what you're supposed to focus on so that's the first step once you know what you're supposed to focus on we provide education and you're going to be able to learn the things that you're supposed to work on let's say you have to work on your packaging we have an online uh, class that you can take about doing your design for your packaging or if you don't want to do it and you have the money you can actually pay someone that we vetted to do it for you so you don't have to go online look for a designer spend money and then you don't have good results with us you can make sure that you're going to have the results that you want for your business then the goal is actually to get to fulfillment so Usually that's what people uh, reach us for. They want to do fulfillment, but you're not always ready to do fulfillment. If you don't have your PC barcodes on your products, if you're not on Shopify, if you don't have SKU numbers, if your website don't have a funnel, if you don't have a marketing strategy, you are not ready for fulfillment, and we help you get ready for fulfillment. Yeah. So basically that's the main line. So and where can more. they find you? We'll put all of the info down mm -hmm. below, but where can they find you and how, how can they follow you? Yes, so they can find us. You can find us on uh, ecomspaces.com online. Also on Instagram, ecom-spaces. And of course you guys can come up to our location in Atlanta. We are in the West End at 600 Bronner Brothers Way, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. 
310. Check my girl out. I'm so proud of you. I just feel like, I know you always talk about that I was, you know, one of the first people that ca- that came in, and I can't believe, I couldn't yes. believe that you were so new then, because yes. it seemed like you had, had it going on way back then. So to yeah. see you getting your flowers, to yeah. see you getting some checks, I to know. see you working with so many amazing people, I'm just proud of you. I'm excited thank for you, you and I you. can't wait to see what and you're going to do really next. really, being here means so much to me, because I was telling uh, one of the members before I came, and I was like, she was the first person with influence to tell about me, to believe about what I was doing, and to give us a shout, shout out. Nobody did it before. And I remember looking at the videos, I was like, oh my God. I le- wow. from the I told you that day, like I, my mind was blown to see what yeah. you had done and to know yeah. that that was just literally the beginning, yeah. beginning. It was amazing. And I mm. love being able to share good people. So thank you for being good people and having such an amazing mm. reputation mm. that you've been able to uphold for the work that yeah. you do. So holla at my girl. OK, she's not just doing fulfillment, not just a co-working space. She got some consulting going on. OK, she's going to help you make sure you are in the right place so that you can actually make that profit and hopefully, you know, fulfill your purpose. So make sure y'all check her out online. If you're in Atlanta, come check her out. You can shop some of the brands that she has right there in her facility. If you're in need of a co-working space, she got you covered there as well. If you need product photos, like they do it all, okay? Check her out. We got to make sure we put our money where our mouth is, practice group economics, and support black businesses. Share this episode with a friend. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you next week. So if you made it this far, I just know you loved that episode. Well, what you did not know is that we recorded it right here in ATL at Elevate Studios. Yes, your girl has her own studio, y'all, and it's not just for me. I'm opening it up for you too. So if you have a podcast, if you are a vlogger, a YouTuber, or a content creator, and you are looking for a professional studio to record your content, or you want to hire me and my team to fully produce your content, make sure you check out the show notes below or log on to elevateagency.com.